Ana, here. Ana, come on. Come. Ayla. Ayla. Yeah, Ayla. Now let's spot the dog morning. <laughs> She's had a run in the water already. There's quite a few people around this morning. Yeah, the Okay. Right. Surprising, actually. <clears throat> actually, it's a Tuesday lunchtime, or maybe people are out at lunch. But I'm coming from quite a cold and dull Glasgow. Not raining, but Isla's had fun in the water with a, another doggy pal. And of course it's muddy because we've had lots of rain. Right, Isla, yeah, come. And we go up, is it the stairway to heaven? <laughs> the stairway to the woods. So I hope you had a good start to the week, everybody. And I've been busy this morning on some calls. But taking a break now with Isla. She's ahead of me there, looking at what's in the woods. Hi Derek, <laughs> give a wee wave. <clears throat> I think you're having better weather down there if you're in the London area. There's a children's nursery. They come out into the woods, which is lovely. I was on a conference call with a colleague this morning and she lives down south. And she couldn't believe that I was in so many clothes, <laughs> telling her that I had all my winter woolies on, plus the heating on, and she was in a t-shirt. Very different times now. Oh. There's children there on the grassy patch. Ayla, come! <laughs> right. Good girl. She's still, she's not yet a year old and she's very obedient. <clears throat> Just say, come Ayla. And she comes. She's getting quite like Darcy the Visa, who we call the Velcro dog, because she sticks close by. But so does Isla. She's never very far from your side. 
Do you hear the children? That squeals of delight. <laughs> they just love being out in the woods. <clears throat> right, Isla, we'll go this way. Cause you might want to go in and see the children and we'll just stay clear of them. We'll go along the chalk walk here with the river down below. I'm always out of puff actually going up these steps. There's quite a lot of fishermen out. There's a fisherman down there. Right, this way. So I don't know what you're all up to this week, but I hope you take some time to go outside, walk in nature. It just gives you a new perspective on everything. I think we're going into a warmer, warmer weather this week, so the weather people say. But there really are no seasons now. It makes for, I know there's global warming, but it really makes for um, surprising days. You just don't know what each day will bring. And we're really lucky up here. Isa? I Isla? Isla? Got Isa. Isla. <laughs> There's a sheer drop there. Come, no, no, no. Isla. Here. Isla. Oh, I don't want you going down into the river. You fall down there and I can't go after you. She's seeing the river and she's seeing people, I think. I could panic there. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies to Isla. Um, no, no, yeah. Because there's kind of little trails down to the river, but I couldn't follow her. That would be a nightmare. There we are. <clears throat> I should look up on the map as to where this part of the river goes. I think it's still the River Kelvin, but we're in Dawes Home Park and I'm on the east side of the park. We're very, very lucky to have beautiful parks in Glasgow and quite wild. You really feel as if you're out in the wild. So many paths. was meeting another colleague last night, David, for dinner and uh, he was he's from the south as well, Kent area, <clears throat> and he couldn't believe how cold it was and Glasgow a bit disappointing. Our city really needs to oh, get a grip. Here's Isla. She sensed, I think, squirrels. <laughs> Did you sense a squirrel, Ayla? Um, there's just so many shops closed. The streets really... Just litter. It's terrible. And when I think back to when we were City of Culture, all the stops are pulled out, absolutely magnificent flowers, streets all clean, almost people taking a pride in their city. And that just seems to have gone, it's very, very sad. Oh, it's lovely, listen to the birds. It's 
some acorns there from little acorns grow huge oak trees, big strong oak trees Right, a fork in the road here now yeah, Isla's deciding which path we'll take are you? Will we go down to the right? No, nope, just come back up. We're going to the left, which is very muddy. She doesn't mind. <laughs> I really should change into my welly boots when I come out. Because you just don't know how deep some of these muddy puddles are. Right. I wonder sometimes if you would get lost in this park, but I've spoken to like, a, I suppose like a park ranger. There's sometimes one or two around and they'll tell you, no, you can't get lost. Whatever road you take or path you take, eventually you'll reach the exit or the entrance to the park. There's another wee path up there. I wonder where that goes. Will we go up here? Slightly different view today. <clears throat> now I hope if you can't get out that you do enjoy what somebody had suggested and I'm now calling are my Pat's Pup Park Poodles. So there's no power walking here. We're just putling along, which is means a leisurely walk. <sighs> Definitely heard was that either a squirrel or a bird on the ground. <laughs> Keen sense of smell and keen hearing. Sadly, I'm no horticulturist, so I don't know what really what any of these plants are, but they're certainly growing after the rain. I know, I promised that I'll start looking at what trees are what and trying to get the names. I have a friend actually who, if you ask her what a plant is, what kind of plant, what type, she gives you the Latin name. <laughs> Now I'm wondering if we'll go, no I think we'll go up this way because the, <clears throat> the lower path there takes me down again to where you can have a sheer drop to the river and I do not want to lose Isla I like coming to the bottom end of this wood because there's no, no or not a lot of dog walkers and this morning I've only met a couple of dogs and I don't know whether I'm a recluse or antisocial but I love the company of one dog or two maybe three and just walking on my own it's beautiful I don't know, plastic pipe pipes have been laid there. I hope they're biodegradable. No, I don't know. Some of these plants have been pulled out.
and I were trying to get at the roots. I don't think that would be a good idea. <clears throat> now if I'd gone the bottom path, I would have had to come up these steps. flew past me there. <laughs> oh, just loves the mud, that's it. Into the muddy path there. I'm not going to follow. Now here's a wee notice. This notice says that I think that there are children's nursery groups. What does it say? Yes, please be aware and keep dogs under control. So bypass where the children are. <coughs> it's lovely hearing the children squealing in delight and certainly marvellous to have children come out into the woods and just be in nature. If only lots of adults would do the same. I know there are so many challenges around and it is difficult, but seriously, if you just try and find somewhere you can walk in nature and breathe in the... I mean, it's... I know there's pollution around, but it's as pure as you can get out here. And what I love is getting energy from the trees and from nature. And if you take time to listen, you can hear the leaves and the trees singing as well as the birds chirping. And anyone who knows me knows I do love trees. Hug a tree. Look at the architecture of the way these trunks and branches have all intertwined. And I know there's noises of society and what's going on. We can hear it in the distance. We can actually shut all of that out. Just take time to look all around you. Be aware of everything around you. Be curious. Look at this, it actually looks man-made, but in fact, all these trunks are growing out of the ground. This could be a little den in itself, and I'm holding, in fact, I'm hugging the tree to my right. You can see my hand here. It's wonderful. Right, so I'm coming out of this nature's den here. Oh, look, you just find tree trunks and although there's moss, there's another tree growing out of it. New life. So I'm heading up towards the top of the park where I think there might be more people and dog walkers. So I'm going to leave you with reminding you about my ABC. Now I get a bit frustrated because I know that there's a group that goes to the gym. I don't go to the gym, the physical gym, um, but they were all heading off. I'm sure they'd paid quite a lot to go to a weekend of, is it Wim Hof's breathing technique? And the breathing technique is what I've been promoting for years. Just deep, effective breathing using the diaphragm. Just stop and breathe in through your nose. I say to the count of three and hold for the count of three. And then exhale through your mouth slowly. 
energizes but also calms you and it improves your immune system and you feel better and breathing really is free And I've had a few people say, oh, I can't do this. Now ditch the word can't. That's not in my vocabulary. As soon as you hear the little negative voices in your head, you need to ditch them, let them go. Turn them into positive phrases. Some people say I've got, excuse the language, bloody-minded gene, my stubborn gene. But I think that stood me in good stead because if somebody says you won't be able to do something or I can't do something, boy, I'll show them that I can. So turn your can'ts into can and take action. And of course the C <clears throat> is creative imagination. Use your creative imagination. Creativity build resilience there I'm peeping through uh, one tree has been split into three ways here three, four four, look at that one, two three, four, there's nearly six actually, the trunks have all divided They're beautiful And of course, creativity builds resilience. And we desperately need resilience. Young people need resilience. Lots of them can't seem to cope with anything that happens. So we need to do that. So I'm going to head off now. And just remember to smile and laugh. They cost you nothing. And thanks for listening and watching. I'll post, keep posting this up later. And virtual hugs to everybody. Okay, bye for now.